Hi, everyone, and thank you for tuning into this interview. My name is Trinity Shorter. I'm a sophomore honors business management major, economics minor from Lawrence, Kansas, and I currently attend Howard University. Go ahead. And hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Whitney Long. I am currently an employee of Nike Inc. And I am North America Stores Retail Brand Director for Kids Brand Defining and Purpose. And also um, stretching into a Retail Brand Concept Director, which will oversee all of our Nike Store concepts across North America. Okay, that's exciting. You kind of hit on the first question already, but could you provide just a brief summary of your current role and like your primary responsibilities, as well as kind of like what your day to day looks like? Yep. So my current role, as I initially started um, within this position over the last year for retail brand specifically over kids for our Nike stores in North America, uh, my job is to work back with our brand marketing team. So all of our, te our teams that drive storytelling for kids products um, for Nike Inc. and deliver how that shows up within our Nike stores. So we have um, two silos as it relates to Nike stores. We have NSO, which are Nike store owned, and then we have Nike uh, NVS, which is Nike value store. So if you think about the factory stores where you see them more at outlets, that's our two umbrellas of um, our Nike overarching concepts. And then within each of those overarching umbrellas, as far as our concepts are concerned, we have underneath it, Nike store owned, uh, House of Innovation, which is in New York, then we have our uh, legacy doors, which exist, our large format doors, which exist across the country in key cities like LA, Chicago, Atlanta, um, also New York. And then we have our new Rise concept, which we opened up the first one in um, Aventura, Florida, which is just north of Miami. Um, that opened up back in November, and we are opening up a slew of those doors in the current um, calendar year. Um, within the LA marketplace and other key destinations. And then we have our live fitness concept, which is newer to the fleet there. We have almost 50 doors and it's small format, focusing on her, the female consumer and catering to her. And then we also have Nike Lifestyle, which is opening up in March and is more so catered to the sneakerhead consumer. And that's happening in our Emeryville marketplace in the Bay Area. And then Nike Value, it's our Unite concept, uh, Nike uh, Unite and then our clearance stores, which is more so everything that we rebuy out of our inline fleet, HOI, et cetera, goes into our value stores. And then it goes through the liquidation process in order for it to get to the consumer. Okay. That's a lot. You sound really busy. Always. <laughs> Always. So working with Nike, you are considered to be in sports. And so can you tell me some of like key lessons you have learned from working in sports and what initially, why did you want to work in sports? Yeah. Um, I mean, I grew up playing basketball. <laughs> I uh, played basketball all the way through high school because I decided that I wanted to go to fashion school for college and we don't play sports in college. Yeah. <laughs> I was able to figure out how to marry the two with um, tapping into visual merchandising, which is uh, everything that you do as far as like how you bring um, product storytelling to life in stores, whether it's mannequin dressing, product placement, how you market it, how you elevate windows and storytell around key capsules and collections. Um, but married that with my love for sports. So working at Nike, we're obviously connected to athletes on a day-to-day -day basis um, and how they show up when they're Nike athletes or Jordan athletes and how they show up within our respective stores. So um, my current role, obviously I'm focused on kids. So uh, we connect back more so with um, kids that are influencing the globe with, within certain sports. So we have a partnership with Sky Brown, who is a phenomenal surfer and skater um, and how we can... Uh, curate a journey around her and then she has a brother named Ocean and we feature um, them within our campaigns with some of our key seasonal products. Um, for sports specifically, like I said, I played basketball. Prior to working at Nike, I worked at an agency working for Nike and managed a space called the Nike Vault at Staples Center, um, now Crypto.com Arena, but we're going to call it <laughs> Staples Center still. Um, and that was the uh, Kobe Bryant space where we curated his entire collection and um, did a partnership with Nike basketball. So it was it was really focused on him during Laker games. We also had opportunity for Clipper games, but my love for basketball has never changed. Having the opportunity to meet with Kobe Bryant or LeBron James, Michael Jordan, Blake Griffin, just huge um, athletes in the sport. It's, it's great to hear their stories and be able to bring journeys to life through the lens of these athletes, because we always talk about everybody's an athlete. Sometimes feel like elite athletes are... Uh, 
getting to their level is unattainable, but how do you also take some of their learnings and bring that to your day-to-day -day life? And I think I, I'm excited about doing that through what I do on a day-to-day -day basis and understanding how these athletes, while they're up here from, from a, when we look at it from a standpoint of an athlete level of tiering of athletes, yeah. just understanding that they're people too. And, and they were once in your position, my position where they were trying to get to greatness and they were still, they were able to achieve that. But how do you also do that in your day to day? Maybe not at the elite level, but just how do I achieve greatness with what I want to do on a day to day basis? So that's what connecting back to sport, connecting back to athlete that inspires me every day with what I do. Yes, that's a good lesson. That's really good. And so you kind of touched on it once again when you were talking about some athletes that you've interacted with or like some big projects that you've been participating in. But what are like one to two highlights from your sports career so far? Um. I would say, I'll say two. Um, the first one that was the most recent was uh, last year when Super Bowl 56 was in Los Angeles. I okay. um, had a great opportunity to, I was working on retail brands. So how our stores came to life with storytelling for the LA marketplace and got to, I was able to pull together how all of our Nike stores within LA were going to come to life with the storytelling filter of Super Bowl. So mm -hmm. having those opportunities and then working back with cross-functional partners and marketing, how are we bringing athletes into our stores, um, such as Travis Kelsey from the Kansas okay. City Chiefs and um, a whole bunch of different local athletes, even connecting back to, um, uh, excuse me, athletes from that used to play in the NFL and bringing them into our stores, um, such as William McGinnis and, and different athletes. He's local from Long Beach Poly. So having those opportunities to bring them in and just feeling the energy of Los Angeles. And I'm from Inglewood. So that was right in my backyard. It's so a culminated all of that by being able to go to Super Bowl, never been to Super Bowl. So it was, <laughs> that was a, such a great highlight for all the hard work that we were doing to connect to our consumer through the lens of sport, mm -hmm. but then also being able to celebrate it with an opportunity to actually see this, that that's like a bucket list for me, quite yes, frankly, yes. being able to go to Super Bowl. So that's so, really that was one. And then two, <laughs> the second one will be quick. Just being able to, I, I kind of alluded to this when I talked about prior to working at Nike, uh, connecting with Kobe Bryant and the Nike vault space that was at Staples Center. Um, I mean, it's it's very, obviously, it's near and dear to my heart because not only from a sports standpoint did I connect with them growing up, but it's right. a lot of my friends that I have from work are through that space where we all met because we were all trying to get after driving mm -hmm. the work of the legacy of Kobe Bryant. So I think it was what he did on the court helped transcend um, things that he was doing off the court and connecting me to individuals that I'll look at as uh, life friends, family, et cetera. So it's it's just great how you don't realize it until you're in the thick of it, how sport transcends court, the field, and can make a day-to-day -day impact in your life. For sure, for sure. I was excited when you said Travis Kelsey because I'm a huge Chiefs fan. So <laughs> that was very exciting. <laughs> Um, and so my last question for you is um, me as well as the people who are watching this interview are interested in getting into sports, whether we are still in undergrad, in grad, pursuing a graduate degree, whatever. And so could you give any advice to us how to pursue a career in sports or some notable people we should look out for and stuff like that? Yeah, so I, I would say there's so many opportunities within sports. I mean, you can talk about sports marketing, you can talk about sports broadcasting, you can talk about, do I want to be uh, an athletic trainer or a physical therapist that caters to athletes when they're injured? There's mm -hmm. marketing with what I do and how do I storytell around these athletes in store to connect back to our consumer and just drive this emotional connection. And for me, that's kind of what drove me to the path that I went down. I'm like, I love fashion. I love uh, visuals. I love interior design. I love how spaces come to life. Mm -hmm. And obviously I've learned more of this where I can actually articulate what I'm feeling, what I wanted now versus where I was I'm not going to date myself, but 10, 15 years ago, <laughs> yes. where I have a love for sport, but I also had a love for fashion. And I didn't know how to marry the two until I realized, Oh, Nike's it, you think you don't necessarily at the time when I was looking at, it, I wasn't thinking about it as a fashion sense. We've obviously right. shifted tremendously as far as athleisure and active wear and how people have incorporated that into their day-to-day -day life versus just when they're working out. Right. So I think for me, what I would, my advice to individuals is if you're, if you're unsure, but you know, you want to be in sports, my biggest thing is what do you, what connects with you the most? What do you always get excited about 
um, when you see, do I, do I want to pull together a strategy? Do I, is it cool how I can drive how uh, I'm taking this elite athlete story and bring it to life for like how we're seeding product, which is yeah. giving key people, key influencers, their products so that they can socialize on social media. And then it drives awareness, which will obviously drive traffic into stores or drive traffic to e-commerce. Mm-hmm. Or do I get excited about, I like the medical field. So I want to yeah. make sure I work with these individuals. I think it's finding what you're passionate about and how that connects with you or how that makes you feel and taking that and sharpening it into sports and and then connecting with those individuals. LinkedIn is probably the one of the greatest inventions, I would say. I mean, yeah. I would say sometimes it can be inundating with information, but if you use it right, it can be a great tool for networking. I think sometimes people may get frustrated with cold calls, if you will, but if you're pr- p- putting yourself in a position to promote how you want to get after your career objectives and you're very clear and articulate that when you're reaching out to someone where you see this role looks like something that I might be connected with let me send a note to this individual and who knows where that's going to go I think having that mindset and being able to do that or having these opportunities to share on YouTube and being able to share like (laughs) hey reach out to me if you're you're you aspire to get into retail marketing. I think it's the networking part of it is one of the biggest things I would say. But just, I would always ask, like, even if you're unsure, maybe come up with a few options and reach out to those individuals. So then that way you can get an understanding of what that role or those those positions or those industries do as it relates to sports. Mm -hmm. So then that way can help drive like and and tailor your list to like what you're truly passionate about. And then I would say the other part of it was, uh, would be, when you are when you are in school, I think the best way to get experience is to always, uh, or excuse me, the best way to connect is always to get experience. So if there's opportunities for you to intern, if there's opportunities for you to even, hey, reach out, same thing on LinkedIn, but say, hey, obviously we don't want to give away free business, but at the right. same time, <laughs> there's an opportunity for you to connect back and you pull something together and share it with an individual and just say, hey, I would love to share this with you. Mm-hmm. Watermark it because it's your, it's your, um, whatever you're presenting, whether it's a pitch or it's a strategy or it's something that you see could be an opportunity within a certain industry, share that and, and share, I would love to go in more details with you. Um, and I would love to be able just to have the exposure so that I can build my resume as I'm trying to get work so that when you're looking at, you can always say free or, um, unpaid experience is experience because you'll see resume or you'll see uh, job postings and say, five to six years of experience. And you're like, I just graduated yeah. from college. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> but if you say I have four years of experience, you don't have to say it was paid or not. You still have the experience. So I would say, take those opportunities to get the experience in school. And it could be a, a slew of things. Maybe it's a quarter here and mm-hmm. then a full semester here or an entire summer. Those still add up to years of experience. So that would be my biggest thing is making sure that you take the opportunity to immerse yourself entry level just because experience is experience. And I think anybody will take that over just, I didn't even attempt to have any experience. Right. That, that was good. Um. Well, thank you so much, Whitney, for taking the time to complete this interview with me. I learned a lot. And so I know everybody else watching will learn a lot. Awesome. Yeah. And if, if there's anything else, um reach out to me whitney.long at nike.com and i will see if there's anything that i can do to support you on your journey for your next step in your career or just put you put you in the right direction with connecting with other industry experts that may be able to help you on your journey towards getting jobs or your career opportunities thank you of course